Welcome to Nerds Chatting, movie, TV, comic chat. Thanks for tuning in. Welcome everybody to the Nerds Chatting podcast, part of the Nerds Chatting. I'm going to get this right one day. Conglomerate. No, what is it? Network. Network. I'll get it right. I had some positive feedback about just chatting, so you know. I've seen an awful lot of positive feedback about just chatting. I've got two more in the works. Ah. And then after that, I'll figure it out. I still qu- don't, haven't quite nailed down what the other thing is that I'm going to do, but I'm going to do something. There is another thing coming. So yeah. we are, we're, this is the Nerds Chatting podcast, but as I said, we're part of the Nerds Chatting network because we're going to do a whole series of other different podcasts and we've got content on different blogs and YouTube and videos and blah, blah, blah. My name is Nate and with me today is Ben and we are missing our tr- trio... I mean, can I say hello before we say how much we're missing, yeah, JP? Is that, is that all right? No. Can, I, can I speak on this podcast? Yeah, you've already had a... Just goes to show that you don't just... Uh, horrible to me just to um, show off to JB. You just hate me, don't you? Well... You hate my face. Let me all break my that face. down. Let me break that down. I don't show off to JP. I don't just pick on you for any reason. And I don't just hate you. Good. Okay. Fine. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, we're missing JB's yeah. days. He's gone, yeah. to the, he's gone to the dick doctor down in Cornwall? Yeah, Apparently. he is in. He's in a different country right now, Cornwall. <laughs> uh, if they had their way, it would be a completely different country. True story. One time, I went camping in Cornwall, and on the website, the directions showed at it from from Cornwall, yes, and from England, yes. Wow. As opposed to <laughs> from Devon, you know, so that it was suggested that you know. England was a different country to Cornwall. Uh, when Bless I was the little Cornish people that live well, near, right near me. <laughs> uh, yes, and that's not alienate any of our, our, our Cornish listeners, if there are any. If there are, hello. Um, yeah. Um, when I worked in Devon and Cornwall Police yeah. a long time ago now, me too. Um, one of the guys uh, said to me there, I don't know if it was a joke, it was late at night, could have been because I was working shift works. He said, hey, Devon and Cornwall Police, uh, um, sorry, Cornwall is, um, at times, it has been murder capital of the UK. Wow. Because everyone um, who lives in rural areas has a shotgun and they all kill each other, apparently. Oh, my. I know. That feels like tarring everyone with the same brush. Yeah, but hey, yeah, yeah. Because you know. there's an interesting fact about um, Devon and Cornwall Constabulary has got like the highest um, land mass type coverage with the smallest um, force. force. I think so. But it's because the population is low. Like, it's, it's like, because I, 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 this, spoilers, insight to, your, to my life. I worked for. Uh, Essex uh, police as well uh, at one they, point. Yeah, yeah they yeah. weren't. They weren't Essex. It was Devon and Cornwall Constabulary and Essex Police. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, but they had they had the highest force. For oh right, okay. For space. This was at that time. I don't know if it's true. Anymore. Why are we talking about this? I don't know. Because JB has gone to the Dick Doctor in Cornwall, which is a oh, separate country. Yeah. Should That's we talk right. about nerdy stuff? I guess. Nurse chatting podcast. So Nate and Ben talking about movies and TV shows and comic books. And uh, this week we're going to talk about Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Kingdom. But before that, we'll do some breaking news and some nerd scene. Broken news. So this is breaking news. It's so old, it's not broken. No, it's already broken. It's not breaking. Oh God, I am not on the ball. Today. I told you you were on the ball. No, today. I, no, you said I wasn't. You just said my heart wasn't in it. My heart's in it totally. I'm just not on the ball. Okay, so it's it's broken news. It's not breaking. It's so old, it's already broken. Yeah. Oh my God, it's just been our thing for forever. Forever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. Dumbo had a trailer. What the yeah. hell? This came out of nowhere. Well, we knew it was being made. Tim Burton. Yeah. Um, Colin Farrell. Yeah, and many others, all sorts of people. So, is it going to be? Is it going to be based not on the Disney version of Dumbo, but on the? I take it it was a book or something. Oh no, before. no, it's a hundred percent Disney. It's a hundred percent. Oh no, I, I know it's Disney doing it, but I don't know if they're because you know I don't recognise Colin Farrell's character. I don't recognise any of the, the only people I knew from Dumbo were was Dumbo, his mum, and the, the crows. stork, oh, yeah. the, the, the racist crows, yeah, and um. Uh, not Jiminy Cricket, the other one, the yes, one him, the the little field mouse who wore uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. like the Greatest Showman hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was? I think I think there has to be a there has to be a. Uh, they can't just recreate that, no, can they? No, no. 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 Well, okay. they could have done maybe. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm worried that it's Tim Burton because Tim Burton uh, has his um, his <laughs> his ways. No, he has his, <laughs> he has his uh, like um, Tim Burton printing press. That prints Tim Burton stuff. 
you mean Johnny Depp's going to show up and be weird? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, the other people, Danny DeVito's in it, um, Eva oh, yeah, Green is in it, Michael Keaton's in it. I mean, it's... Michael cool. Keaton's in it, and I think wearing a very, very bad wig. Uh, or maybe, yeah. And the song that played over the trailer, I believe, is the song that Dumbo's mum um, sang or is playing when um, Dumbo reunites with his mum when she's locked up as a mad elephant. Spoilers. Oh, come on, everyone's seen the Dumbo Disney I, movie, haven't they? You say that, it's very old. This is true. This um, is very true. I kind of like the look of it. I think the effects look pretty good. It's only a teaser, but it's kind of tying into that whole... Uh, well, obviously, there's live-action Disney movies, which sure. is the new, the new wave of them. It's got that greatest showman circus element to it. I don't know. It's kind of cool. looks good. <laughs> I don't really, honestly, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not down with any of the live-action remakes of Disney properties, so I'm, I'm not really that fussed. However... This did not look terrible. He's got cute ears, is not he? He's got a cute face. I like well, him. Well, Dumbo's thing is he has big ears, you know? I like and him. he can They've fly. Done, I know, but he, there's, by making it live action, it could have been a little bit creepy, especially with the Tim Burton printing press. Um, Very loud siren going yeah, past the window. But I, I, I think it looks good. I, I'm all right with it. Yeah, and I like that I'll, she gives him the feather and, yeah, yeah, and he can fly with that. Yeah, I'll wait for the reviews. There is one moment that worries me. There is a flash at one minute and seven seconds of a um, is that a pink elephant bubble pink elephant, <laughs> which means they're doing the psychedelic moment. Uh, the bit when Dumbo gets drunk. Look yeah, out. and Look it's out. a little bit pink elephants everywhere. It's a little bit intense. Bippity boppity. Not sure I like that. It's uh, going to freak me out that bit. It's going to make me go all queasy inside. <laughs> well, it, it will probably be the most Tim Burton thing you'll ever see. Yeah. So I just hit the table. You did, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I told you I would hit it. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to see this film. You're I probably won't see this film. You see this film. Uh, probably not. N- not unless I'm, I'm pressured into doing it. I'm going to pressure you into doing it. Nah, nah. Okay, good. So uh, Fox negotiations continue. Okay, so we talked about this a little bit last week. Um, however last week it was oh we think Comcast might come in with a better deal than Disney uh, Comcast have come in with a 65 uh, yeah sorry um, apologies I should think so too <gasps> yeah 65 billion dollars and what did Disney offer 60 maybe so basically no, there's Disney was in 52.4 oh okay fine alright so it's, it's like whatever it, it's it, it's a significant more amount of billions of dollars. Yeah. And Fox are playing like, just give us the most money and you can have it. It's the dirtiest laundry out in the open I've ever seen. Like, it's, it's live negotiations almost. Like, how, how are we, little old us, sitting in Devon in the UK, aware of the, the, the financial negotiations of Fox, Comcast and Disney? It's not okay. I can't argue with that statement. I cannot argue with it. However, um, looking at this from a, a, a fan point of view, from a nerd point of view, um, I really hope that Disney get the rights because Disney could then incorporate um, what you know, fandom sees as core Marvel characters into the MCU. So you get the Fantastic Four, you get Silver Surfer, you get all the X-Men, you, know, you get Wolverine talking to Tony Stark. How great is that going to be? Um, and I just think if Fox were clever and they did a, for the next five or ten years, we want a, te- uh, I don't know, like a 5% chunk of whatever money you make from these properties that we're selling to you, Disney would go to get it. I think they'd probably go, fine. Actually, you know, we'll meet you halfway at 3% or something like that. Mm-hmm. Comcast aren't going to do that. They might have all the money, but they don't have Disney money. Mm. Do they? Don't know. Do they? I don't know. This is the biggest company in the world. I know. I'm torn because I want that as well. I mean, by the very nature of being a comic book fan, you, fans, we like the connected universe. And Feige said the other day, he's just waiting on the phone call to say, go for it. You can incorporate the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, etc., into the MCU. He, he, it, was a, it was almost on this, as, as part of this story, you know, Feige said, yeah, yeah, I'm just waiting on that call, but it, I can't do anything yet. It makes me wonder if that's why, or this is one of the reasons why we haven't heard too many details about the air quotes phase four. Sure. Because 
Maybe they've got all sorts of possible plans. Po- pardon? Possible plans. Possible plans, yeah. Do you know Excuse what I mean? Because oh, I completely know what you mean. Completely know what you mean. Um, I am I hope it happens. I hope Comcast are blown out of the water by Disney, who offer a 100 billion take it or leave it deal or something stupid like that. But I, I, I just want to see... Those characters deserve to be in movies that are more successful than what has come before. Because they've done all right here and there, but they've not been, you know, they've not been... They've not been Infinity War type so deals, have they? Do you think that the quality of movie making will maintain or will it be the same you know copy paste that we've spoken about before or will we be too inundated with stuff because once they've got those rights supposedly they get them um, they can make more movies and will we have more Disney Marvel movies every year will it be too much will it be flooded or do you spread it out over longer yes okay good (laughs) I, you asked me so many questions then, I, I don't know. I, 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 there's, there's I don't a, think it will reach saturation point. There's a worry about that, right? There is, but I think I feel saturated with Star Wars properties at the moment. I, like, I feel I don't want to talk about Star Wars again for at least a year. And I think the way it's going, it's going to be a year and a half because that's with episode nine. So, but you, I don't feel that way about Marvel stuff. Mm. I genuinely don't. I cannot wait for Ant-Man and the Wasp to come out because I want to see what happens next. With Marvel, the... it's never a continuation. Sorry, with with Star Wars, it's never a continuation of the story. Next, it's at the moment it's um, it's episode whatever it was, it was episode seven. Then it was jump back in time to Rogue One. Then it was episode eight, and everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people didn't like that, and I had my problems with it. Then it's jump back in time to Solo, and then it's going to be episode nine. Whereas with Marvel, they're always moving the story forward. Hmm. always it's always moving forward there's always something else happening there's always tidbits of little oh you know we're aiming guns at everyone who's important Bruce Banner Stephen Strange and it's like oh Stephen Strange that's Doctor Strange I don't know how you can say that you're saturated with Star Wars when you've listed four that have come out yeah but they've all come out in, in they've come out in like in two years Four yeah. movies have come out in two years. Marvel but, had 14, but no, only, 14 movies in 10 years? Okay, fine. However, <laughs> however... You know my maths had up there. Yeah, let me just check it. It pretty much adds up. <laughs> um, but, like I said, though, those stories didn't have... They, they didn't... There was like... Okay, so there, there's, there's this room of people who are doing Star Wars stuff. They were out the window, mate, when it came to episode eight, because everything that J.J. Abrams set up in episode seven... Ryan Johnson just kind of came in and went, yeah, none of that's that important to me. I'm no, just going to do something else with no, it. This is, a de- so, this is a debate for another time because we could talk about this at length because I don't think he just went, oh, I'm going to throw it out. What he did was he purposely said it's not as important as everyone thinks it no, is. No, he purposely did something to change your expectations. He didn't want to do a movie that would be no surprises, flatline, exactly what you expect. He wanted to keep you interested. Spoilers. Killed Luke Skywalker. Sorry, Luke Skywalker is always going to die because he needs to come back as a force ghost. What story are we talking about here? Exactly. Should we move on? Yeah. What was that? That was Comcast. They're Ooh, outbidding Disney maybe. for Fox properties, right? Maybe, yeah. My yeah. God, that just went. That was a tangent and a half. Yeah. Game of Thrones prequel ordered pilot, ordered to pilot by HBO. Yes, it's set thousands of years before Game of Thrones. Sure. Let me tell you exactly what this says in my mind. Okay, go. Game of Thrones, the TV show. Yes. Will finish with. A whole bundle of questions unanswered on purpose so that you have to go back and watch the prequel series to find out why the long night happened, who these people are, how things fell down, what the ancestors are. There are probably some sort of time travel involved as well. So spoilers for the last season of Game of Thrones, but if you haven't watched it, what are you doing? Go and watch it. I'm going to eat a banana while you do this. That's fine. Don't look me in the eye when you eat that banana. Okay. I do not want to be looked in the eye whilst you eat that banana. Don't do it. Oh, he did it. Oh, my God. Moving oh, on. It's the worst. Um, so, yeah, spoilers for the season, whatever, seven of Game of Thrones just happened. Uh, but what you're saying there will probably involve Bran because there is the suspicion that Bran, Bran Stark, is also historical, world-renowned Bran the Builder who helped build the wall in the first place. Um, so <laughs> there's a potential that with his, uh, with his weirwood, green-seeing, wa- weir-wagging, whatever it is, um, capabilities, he goes back in time, uh, pushes himself into the body of Bran the Builder and builds the wall. 
and infused it with magic from the children of the forest and all that sort of thing. 100%. I'm fine with that. Do you know why I'm fine with that? Because it's part of Game of Thrones history and lore. And the other thing as well, as I was thinking about this, oh God, yeah, it's going to be set thousands of years in the past. Nothing will change. Their civilization hasn't changed. No. So, so there still be... It will still be medieval times, basically. It will just be 3,000 years ago. The, the, in fact, the, the, the 300 years that we have at the moment of Game of Thrones history is all after Aegon's Landing, because it's all 300 AL, which is Aegon's Landing. In fact, if anything, it will be more advanced because it's super, super magic. Oh, well, be, that's interesting. There'll be more stuff they can do. Yeah. They'll be able to like pluck things out of the air and use water to, to communicate, and they'll be able to sink into the ground and they'll be able to breathe fire and all sorts of things big set piece i want i want to see them breaking because they they westeros and essos used to be joined didn't they right at the yes. bottom yes. and then the children of the forest used magic to break that connection and that created the the stepping stones yeah. islands i think it is yeah. that'd be a fantastic set piece and it's going to like you say it's going to include you know the the others the white walkers and the long night and why will that happen it's going to be great Agreed. I'm up for this. Who's showrunning it again? Oh, it's being written by... Uh, it's written by Jane Goldman, which is uh, Jonathan Ross's wife. Yes. And executive produced by none other than George R. R. Martin. I think she's got a couple of people showrunning it with her, hasn't she? Yes. But the guys who are doing currently she'll, Game of Thrones... Yeah, yeah she'll serve as showrunner and uh, executive produce alongside Martin and the Game of Thrones veterans, uh, veteran Vince Gerardis and damages co-creator Daniel Zellman will be uh, oh, interesting producing. interesting I just yeah. like damages um, but uh, Dan Wise and or Dan Dan Benioff and D.B. Weiss Weiss that's the ones aren't involved they're not involved at all because are they? they're, they've moved over to Star Wars now that's right yeah great I'm hyped for this I want more Game of Thrones there's so much history that George has has plotted out to get these characters to the positions they are on the chessboard I want to see some of that history so I'm hyped for this I wonder if it's too much of a time difference maybe a thousand years or 500 years or i don't know it just feels but big in george's world that he's created it is three thousand years ago that the wall was built mm. so it makes sense doesn't it because mm. if you change that then stuff that's been said in the game of thrones series yeah, so okay. far doesn't make sense so it's it's it will be it will end with the wall being built yeah and you won't have the Seven Kingdoms. You'll have um, the Starks in the north. You'll have... Will they be Starks? Yes, they will be Starks. I don't know. If oh, hang will. on, no, because it might still incorporate the First Men, won't it? Yeah, yeah. So they might they'll, not they'll be, be Stark the, at this point. The ancestors of the Starks. I reckon they'll have a name that's like Stark. Yeah. Ned Stick. Or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I want more Game of Thrones. I'm ha- do you, know, you realise, have you even thought that this time next year the TV show Game of Thrones would have wrapped up and finished. Good. And we'll know the ending. Yeah, good. Well, we know the ending of the show, not the books. They'll be different. Hashtag, Hashtag you're a jerk. Bet they're different. Of course they'll... No, they can't be that different. Bet they, they're different. They can't be. Move on. What's next? Uh, linked, similar. Similar and linked. New details on Amazon's Lord of the Rings series have been revealed. New details? Uh, okay, so the, this, this is the least amount of details. And when I put it on the document, I put details and I did air quotes. Oh, I see. Yeah. You have. You've been very coy. So it'll be in production for two years. Um, wow. So it's likely to be coming out in 2021, but the hope is to get it out in 2020. Um, it's not going to be remaking the movies or starting from scratch. Um, the intent is to make it one big series. So there have been rumours before that it's young Aragorn. Yeah, I, I saw those rumours, yeah. Um, sign me up. Yes, please. I'm on board. Yeah. His time as a ranger, yep. basically, yeah. Do it. Give it to me. Because you can do all sorts of stuff. You can do love interest with Arwen when he first meets her. You can do um, mini skirmishes. You can do Sauron like being foreboding in the background like they put in The Hobbit, although The Hobbit was a bit extended too much. Too much extended. Uh, um, and yeah, that's it. Yeah. That, that's it. So we don't actually know... Who it's when it's going to take place, who it's going to be around, but it's gonna it's going to be linked to the Lord of the Rings um, trilogy of movies we had in the early noughties and the Hobbit movies that we had yep. later. And Peter Jackson is free to choose if he wants to be involved or not. Still in conversation. 
I um, hope that he is involved in an executive producer type of capacity where they basically go to him and go, we're, we're thinking this, what do you think? And he'd go, yeah, that's fine. What will or, happen? Yeah, I, I think that's okay. Let me tell you what will happen, right? Yeah. That will happen. Yeah. Three months down the line, they'll be like, mm, I'm not sure what we're doing here. And then they'll be fired and, then, and he'll then, take over. Yeah, and I was going to say, <laughs> then six months down the line, they'll be like, we have no idea. Please, please, Peter, take over. And then he'll direct the whole thing. Oh, God. Um, they're filming in, in New Zealand again. Oh, well, um, I would hope so. Where, where else are they going to film? Yeah. They so, can't film Lord of the Rings anywhere else but New Zealand. So give it to me now. Yes, please. I'll take it in 2020 or 2021. Yeah, it's fine. But that and the Watchmen TV show that's coming around soon. Yeah. There's some big properties moving into TV. It is still a golden time for TV. Yeah. I'm happy. You're a golden time for TV. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. So, Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok are to explore DC Rebirth's Three Jokers mystery. Is it Fabok? Is it Fabok? Yes. Good. Uh, so, th- so, I, they- I put this on here because last week you said there is categorically one Joker. And I was like, is there one Joker? Yeah. And then literally, like about a day or two later, this story came out. I was like, well, we've got to talk about this. Well, the new story is bigger than this, really. The new story is Jeff Johns is no longer in his role that he was in before. Which uh, we haven't actually mentioned. Within the DC movie yeah. universe, so he, yeah. Well, he was, more than that, he was the DC Entertainment chief executive or something. Fine. Can't remember what it was. Yeah. And he's more or less stepped down. However, they made it a good news story. Yes. Because now he can write everything, which is what he essentially wants, want, should be, because he's a great writer. Does that mean we're going to get Doomsday Clock every month now? Maybe. That I think the point good. was, he was being stretched far too thin. Yeah and didn't have enough involvement in any of the things he was doing. I can bloody tell you, mate, he was stretched thin on the last issue of Doomsday Clock. Oh! Slim, slim, really. Oh. Tried to read it this morning. Uh, we'll no talk chance. about that a bit more in Nerd Scene. But yeah, so they're doing the three Jokers. Yes. It's basically, it's all the things that Jeff Johns laid down when he did Rebirth, because he had a lot of time to do Rebirth, yeah. that he hasn't had time to pick up on. But the three Jokers thing, or well, there's been something around the Joker since um, Dark Side War, hasn't there? Yeah. When Batman sat in the... Um, Metron chair. Metron chair, and he became the god of knowledge. Yes. He said, who is the Joker? And then he went, no, that's not possible. So my guess is the Metron chair said to him, there are three Jokers, which one yeah. are you meaning? Yeah, and he yeah. was like, no, that's not possible. Because So then it was set up in... John's is- He's got threads through all of that. Snyder's dangled this as well. When he was finishing off his New 52 Batman run, there was a talk about, there was some discussion about the Joker being some sort of eternal mischief yes. that's been around forever. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it was super eerie. Mm. Super eerie. I am keen for this. DC are putting a lot of eggs in the Joker basket in comics and in movies. But he hasn't been in the comics really for a while. He's come back in a big mm. way recently because of the, the Batman storyline where he's gonna, Batman's going to marry Catwoman. And Joker's going to show up and try and kill everything because that's what the Joker does. Standard. But I think what, it, I think what it feels to me from a business decision, Joker is one of the most recognisable characters mm. that you can do. One thing DC have in abundance is great villains. Yes. And use the best you've got. Sure. Throw them out everywhere. So. For me, though, this is, this is not only one of DC's or, or one of comic book's greatest writers in, in Mr. Johns. It's also... You know, and my problems with with Doomsday Clock issue five aside, which we'll get to later, it's also one of DC's um, greatest artists they've got currently in in Fabok, Fabok, whatever yeah. you want to call him. I'm very sorry about the sirens that keep going past outside. We We're, are fairly near a police station and a uh, hospital. Yeah, we are. So yeah, we just got to live our life. Um, but no, I, I'm I'm keen to see what comes of this, and I hope good things will come of it. And I guess in some way, this all has to tie in with Doomsday Clock in some way because Doomsday Clock is somewhere linked to it somewhere linked to it it's happening about a year in the future or something I don't know I'm keen give it to me I want to know more yeah okay go uh, hang on what have we got next what have we got next we got are some... you doing work whilst we're talking on a podcast no no um, I have a ad blocker on Chrome and therefore the CBR website doesn't load properly oh yeah so I have to copy it across to uh, like an incognito thing so I was listening I wasn't I was loading up the thing for the next one. I was teeing up the next story. And now, history's seamless. greatest monster. Wonder Woman 84. Spoilers, everyone. Spoilers. Sorry about this, but spoilers. Lots of spoilers, potentially. If you've not seen Wonder Woman, come back in a bit. And spoilers for Wonder Woman 2. 
Yes. Chris Pine is back. Sure. Wearing 80s clothes. So confirmation now that Wonder Woman 84, or whatever it will be called, yeah. is set in the 80s. They're definitely wearing very 80s clothes. Yeah. There's a picture. Been re- These are official pictures from Patty Jenkins. Yeah. Of Chris Pine wearing a shell suit. With a bum bag. Yep. Or, or, or as the Americans call it, a fanny pack. Yep. That is the most hilarious thing in England. I know. That is the most <laughs> hilarious thing in England. Everyone Google that. If you're not in England, Google fanny pack. Just to say it makes us giggle like little schoolgirls. Honest to God. <laughs> um, and we get Gal Gadot standing in front of TVs with like stuff all over them, which is very, very 80s. So the big, the big reveal is it's definitely set in the 80s, so we know that there's been a jump in time. Quite it's a called big one, Wonder Woman 84, right? Yeah, well, I don't yeah. know if it's called that yet, do we? I don't know, do we? I That's thought, kind no, of I thought that was, it was announced that the title is Wonder Woman 84. That's definitely the promotional stuff. I, I wonder if they'll change it before. It I'm pretty out. sure that's what it's going to be called, mate. Yeah, they'll change it. Or, or, do you know what? Or it won't be. Yeah. But we'll see. It's a very 80s thing to do WW84. It, it is, isn't it? Isn't yeah, it? Right, yeah. Rather than, you know, like a, like a, well, that was 90s. I was thinking ID4. Oh, yeah. I, oh, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's hashtag, not talk about hashtag. that. Um, uh, yeah, and then Steve, Steve Trevor is back. So, a couple of things. Number one, how is he back? Or is it a descendant of the Trevor family who just looks just like his grandpa or great-grandpa? Or nah, nah, Steve Trevor. Is it a Lazarus pit that's brought him back? Maybe. Or is that not Steve Trevor? Is that Hal Jordan? Nah. Nah. I saw some stuff on no, the internet the other no day. Way. Everyone was going, God, Chris Pine would make a brilliant Hal Jordan. Yeah, he would. What, if, what if it was his grand... What if it was uh, uh, Steve Trevor's great-grandson and it was, his name was, through marriage, it was changed. His last name was Jordan and his first name was Harold. I'm going to take a magnum pistol, point it at your theory and blow it out of the water. Damn it. Patty Jenkins' tweet says, Welcome to Wonder Woman 1984, Steve Trevor. Fair enough. <laughs> so how has he come back then? Did he not die? Was, uh, he, was he in ice like Cap for a long time? The thing that blows up? Yeah. What was on it? Uh, a, a, a shit ton of very nasty chemical stuff. Chemical warfare stuff. But it was Ares, God of War, involved in this. Yes. So Ares probably just sucked him into a pocket place or a pocket dimension yeah or hang on who's the, hate when they who's do the that. person that looks after the uh, afterlife in Wonder Woman's oh, I can't remember his name Got dark, build stuff know. maybe he just grabbed him he's living in the afterlife maybe chucked him out just spat him out in the 80s Ugh. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then Chris Pine just lands on the floor a couple of more things that I like from this though the simple fact that Wonder Woman 2 Wonder Woman 84 whatever you want to call it is currently being filmed which means that within a year 18 months we're going to get this movie great because I really enjoy Wonder Woman I want the sequel give it to me now they're talking about espionage type yeah. um, uh, like uh, Cold War type stuff aren't it they is, yes it is so interesting to me that <laughs> Captain America is set in World War Two, and then Captain America Winter Soldier was set in modern day and was spy espionage stuff. And Wonder Woman was set in World War One, and Wonder Woman Two is set in the eighties, which is close to modern day, but a little bit shifted back, a little bit like World War One is shifted back from World War Two. And it's going to be spy espionage type stuff. Isn't that an interesting thing? If it ain't broke, don't fix it, man. Do you know what I mean? She's got like a shield, doesn't she? She does There's have a, a shield. Where she also has a sword. Battlefield shield. Are you, are you saying that DC are ripping off Marvel's formula? I'm saying that DC and Marvel rip each other off and have done for the last 100 years. Fine. I don't think Marvel have been going for that long, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with it. I'll go with it. Why? I'm going to back you and then sack you. Okay. Weird. Yeah, no. fine. I want this movie. I want to see more. I think it's a little... Possibly a little bit silly to reveal an image of Steve Trevor, but let's well, face it, it's Warner Brothers, it's DC, they're always going to fuck well, something no, up. No, they didn't. This isn't a fuck up. This is, this is by design. Because they're filming on location. Oh, uh, right. Okay, so, so they want to cut it off before it leaks. Snappy snappies. Got you. Yeah. Okay, they did fine. it with Shazam as well. Yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Okay, all right. I'll allow all of that. That's fine. Nerd scene? Nerd scene. So this is Nerd Scene. This is where we talk about stuff we've watched. 
or read or seen. I've got nothing in here. You've Go got nothing it. at all, have you? I've been busy, man. Okay, fine. I went, to got... a, I went to a BRM conference yesterday. How's that? But work-life balance, mate, all right? With all the work that you're doing and work in the evening, I know that you're doing. Maybe. You need to take some time to yourself. Maybe. Otherwise, you will burn out. I know, but I've got a big holiday coming up. Fine, but then, you know, don't be burnt out and then be ill on the holiday while you're driving around America. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. So I won't go into Doomsday Clock Issue 5 too much, but I really am keen to know what you think after you've read it. Because there's some, it, it still looks beautiful, but I am so, I need something to happen with the story now. It needs to move on a little bit, because at the moment it's giving me nothing. 12 issues though, so. It, yeah, but that's just, two trades. So yeah. it, by issue five, you'd think there'd be something massively set up that would then leave you on a massive cling ha- hanger, cl- cling hanger? Cliff cliffhanger hanger. at the end of issue six. I'm not seeing that in issue five. If I'm, if, you know, if people out there who are listening have read this and they have a different opinion, then please tweet at us or get us on Facebook or Instagram. Just search for Nerds Chat and you'll find us. But I was really disappointed with issue five of this comic book. Really disappointed. Six is going to blow your mind. Oh, I hope it does it because at the moment I'm thinking, why am I even reading this? <gasps> I know. Okay. I know. I'll read it soon and let you know. Yeah, let me know why, why I'm an idiot. Yeah. Why I'm an idiot. Um, DC Nation, which came out a little while ago, I think early in May, it was like, um, I think it was like a 25 cent uh, comic book in America. Okay. I got it for free over here for whatever reason. But it's setting up three um, summer storylines going through Batman, which is The Wedding, oh, yeah. Prelude to The Wedding, which is a great story by Tom King. Um, uh, Bendis' run on um, Superman, which is Man of Steel, which is a six issue run, which has started. I haven't read it yet, yep. but it's a very interesting story that teases that up. And Snyder's run on Justice League, which is a te- set up for No Justice, which was a, I think, a four issue run or five issue maybe. And then his run on Justice League starts. And the whole comic book was fantastic. Each of the little three individual stories, which were like six or seven pages long on, the, um, on their own, mm. were great absolutely great really well written really well drawn and I cannot wait to have some time this weekend to sit down and pick up and read those comics so I've got quite a bit I've got all of No Justice uh, to read I've got about three or four issues of Batman and all the wedding stuff to pick up yep. and um, I've got I think three or four issues of Man of Steel to read as well from Bendis Cool. I am hyped yeah. I really think that you might like Bendis' Man of Steel as well Maybe. It was a great, great little comic book. Um, last night I read Oblivion Song issue four. Right. Which is um, Kirkman's new comic book that he's yes. doing with um, uh, someone Di Felici, I think it is. Lorenzo Di, De Felici. Let's say yes. It, it, it was great. That was a, last night it was a comic book I read before I went to sleep. It was incredible. Oh, good. Absolutely incredible. I'm very much looking forward to listening to the Oblivion Song podcast, oh, yes. which will be out on Friday, where yep. they'll talk about this comic book, and yep. I get the impression they liked it quite a bit. Oh, I would think so. Um, I'm watching a new uh, show on Netflix called The Staircase. I do have something for this then, because we watched the first two episodes of The Staircase. What did you think? Um, it's intriguing, but I'm not going to watch 13 episodes of it. I need to tell you, there is a time shift in this series. Two time shifts in this series. So the first eight episodes came out in like 2004. Yeah. Then two episodes came out in 2011 when something changed in the case. And then three episodes have come out this year, 2018. Mm. So things have moved on. I've done the first eight episodes of the original bit and the first episode of the, when it came back for three in 2011. Mm. It's... I. I America is a very interesting place. Indeed. And I think that they, they seem to have uh, people, as I'm sure they have in all countries, but they seem to have people who uh, are some of the worst p- human beings in the world living in that, in that, in that, uh, yeah, yeah. In that country. And um, some of them crop up in the show. It's intriguing. And I need to know more. I'm really enjoying it. Really okay. enjoying it. Fair enough. You're not going to watch anymore? Uh, maybe, but... I found myself looking at my phone. So you weren't hooked? No. Ah, that's a shame. If you look at your phone in this, you'll miss stuff. Mm, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. And finally, I watched um, Kingsman 2, Kingsman the Golden Circle. It's, um, it's fine. It's not as good as the first one, which you haven't seen. No. Nope. Um, I won't go into spoilers, but it, it tries to do um, 
it's almost a carbon copy of the first film in some uh, respects. Yeah. And it doesn't do it as well. Ah. The introduction of the Statesman is fine. Um, but their business continuity plan is very woolly. Let's just put it that way. They need to work on that stuff. Yeah. Because we know about that sort of thing. Yeah. And their business continuity plan is the pits. That's my nerd scene. I've got a little bit more, but I'm not going to go into it. That's fine. Do it next week? Yeah, we'll see. Should we talk about Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom? Sure. Let's talk about Jurassic World, Fallen Kingdom. No, 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 no. It's called Jurassic Park 5, Jurassic World 2, Fallen Kingdom of the Dinosaur Emperor. Fair. Okay. Now, should we tell people up front that I have not seen this yeah, film? Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen it. Yeah. Um, I, three movies, three fairly big movies back to back in the space of a month for me have killed my cinema wanting to go yeah. ethos yeah, yeah. I, I was just I, I, I kind of wanted to see it at the same time I just like oh I just don't know if I can be bothered so you know with um, Infinity War and Deadpool 2 and Solo all back to back I was burnt out for this well, I didn't see Deadpool 2 so I'm happy okay so fine you've caught up then yeah yeah okay so I didn't see it so I'm going to ask you some questions about it okay you're going to tell me and then we'll go into spoilers can I uh, I'm going to throw spoilers out straight away oh okay so spoilers for this movie yeah why not yeah uh, so as we walked out of the office earlier uh, one of our colleagues said oh it was really terrible yes they're wrong in every way oh okay. well in your opinion of course no, I, I tend to think that they're wrong in every way it's okay. not terrible at all okay it's two movies put together ah. and in both movies you don't really care about the human characters very much that's what's wrong with it. Right. In my opinion. Okay. So let me just say, um, when I looked at IMDb, it doesn't have the greatest score. It's got about a six and a half out of 10, whereas the original Jurassic World has about a 7.8 out of 10. Yeah. So it's, it's not setting the world on fire. And I've also, I've not seen an awful lot of um, people loving on this movie. But not a lot of people hating on it. It's just... It's fine. It's fine. Which is true. Okay. okay. So, um, I should say right at the start as well, we have a Hulk pod released there, a review of it today. Uh, if you're listening to this and you don't know who they are, go and so- seek them out or I'll link, it, I'll link it below as yeah, well. Yeah, have a listen. They're great. Yeah, They're great. They are great guys. Nicola and Chris. Um, that's correct you remember their names well done. No, I'm just, you know, you're saying they're <laughs> great. We should give them reference to who they are. Um, okay, so what's good about this film? What's good about this film is there's uh, an excellent focus on, on uh, practical effects. Okay, which good. gives it a very good real feel. Mm-hmm. Um, it does some similar stuff to The Last Jedi. It resets some of Jurassic World. The, the trailers give away a lot of it. The, the oh, island yeah. has a vo- of a, an active volcano on it. Right. And it more or less blows up the island. So right? this is the same island from Jurassic World. It's Island Nubla. Yeah. Also the same island from the original Jurassic exactly, Park. Exactly, yeah. Right, okay. So it's uh, the Lost World, Jurassic Park 2. A Lost World is a Fallen Kingdom. A Fallen Kingdom is a Lost World. It's the same movie, right? It's the same model. Sure. There's a bit on the island where they take some dinosaurs and they move them off the island. And then there's a bit on the mainland. Okay. Is it, does it sort of go into like a haunted house sort of thing? No, well, that's the, the, the two movies. So the first movie is an action-adventure thrill ride, which ends on an incredibly somber moment. Right. And the second film within it is a horror, like um, almost like a hammer horror type, you know... Um, yeah. Slasher sort yeah, of thing. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, And it's all set up all the way through... You don't care about any of the human characters. The only human character you care about... Even Chris Pratt, Pratt, Pratt. Well, he's the only one you care about because of his link to Blue. Oh, uh, okay. So they, they do a lot more with that character. Right. Blue. They do a lot more with Blue. You get Blue, Blue is his, um, his, his raptor, raptor that yeah, he... Yeah. yeah, okay. So you get, like, footage of him training and raising the raptors. Okay. And there's a really interesting... and It's a bit schnotty, but there's a bit where he's saying... He's, like, talking to the camera and he's saying, like, you can't turn your back on these or show any weakness. And he pretends to be weak and then the raptors come to get him. Well, as, as little babies? As little babies, they're teeny tiny ones. Yeah. And then it shows him with Blue, and he pretends to be weak, and Blue comes up and checks he's okay. So he has a true oh, bond with Blue. I see. So that, it embellishes that relationship a lot more. Right. Um, and it, That's quite clever, I like that. And it lends weight to the first film, where mm. Blue does actually come back and save him, as opposed to going for the, the, Indo- the, the Indominus Rex. Yeah. Um, 
It has an absolutely fantastic first 10 minutes, which is a, it's a microfilm of all of the other Jurassic Parks that have come before them. So there's a team come onto the island. Uh, it's kind of flooded a bit, um, and it's the MacGuffin, right? So they're, they're going in a submarine, and they're cutting off a bone of the Indominus Rex. Oh, the one that died in the first exactly. film. Exactly. Yeah. To take, Jurassic World, the, yeah. take that back to the mainland and use... DNA from the from inside it, right? So that's the MacGuffin. For that's the movie, that's right? Dr. Henry Wu doing that, isn't he? Well, he's not there, but there's a team of people doing it. Work for him. He's and, the mad scientist guy. And they're all like, oh, they'll all be dead by now. Obviously, the big water one isn't dead. It, it destroys the submarine, but they do get the MacGuffin away. But in doing so, the gates are open and the thing flies, swims out. Oh, for the love of God. Okay. And while that's happening on the mainland yeah. part of it, you know, because that's in that pool area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the mainland part of it, there's a technician like working with the machines. And the reason the gates open in the, in the water is so the T-Rex comes and gets him. And oh. he's running away and he's grabbing the helicopter and it's all raining and it's dark and it's mysterious. And then it grabs the, the, the rope ladder and then, oh, is it going to pull the helicopter down? It's, it's a fantastic... Little that sounds scene. very Spielberg-like, oh, actually. It's, it's brilliant. In fact, that sounds an awful lot like something that was planned to be in Jurassic Park, may have been storyboarded for Jurassic Park, and was probably cut. I can I believe think. it. It's, it's terrifying. Tim will, know. Yeah. Tim will know. It's terrifying, but at the same time, it's dumb dinosaur stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, the, then, the, then the, the full bit of the first movie starts, and like I say, you don't care about the, the characters at all. Not even um, Ron Howard's daughter... Bryce uh, Dallas Howard. not really no I mean it's updated a little bit that's not quite so dumb shoe wear you know she's got, actually got boots on in this one Bryce Dallas Howard Bryce Dallas Howard that's my biggest problem with it is you don't care about the characters you care about the dinosaurs who are trying to eat them there's a bit where <laughs> so they're, they're with this team and they're, they're over the top mercenaries and, and oh they sort of double cross the humans and they're trying to get the dinosaurs off and the volcano's going off and then there's this bit where Bryce Dallas Howard and this sort of Techie guy who shouldn't really be there is is they they're stuck in this um, tunnel. Look, is that the guy with glasses? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and he's yeah. all right. He's kind of funny, but and they're stuck in the tunnel, and then this dinosaur's coming through, and they're like terrified of it, and he's screaming. But there's lava falling down, right? And then the lava falls on the dinosaur every now and then, catches him, and you think, oh god, that looks like it hurts. Stop! I don't want the dinosaur to get lava on it. Poor thing. No, yeah. And yeah. then they climb out of a chute and they get away. But the dinosaur's left in there as the lava's filling up. And I think, what a horrible way to die. That's pretty... Uh, drowned by lava. Yeah. Burnt alive and drowned at the same and then, time. And you know, there's all sorts of Ouch. things. They're running away from the volcano. Silly, silly, silly. But it's a dinosaur movie. What do you expect? Sure. Sure. Okay. Um, okay. T-Rex, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff. Capture the dinosaurs. Jump off the cliff into the water. They're fine. All sorts of dinosaurs falling in. All that, that sort of stuff. Um, it's... You just don't care that much. Mm. There's a silly bit where a truck jumps off the um, the sort of key wharf area into a into the boat that's leaving and somehow gets leapt up. You know, in speed, in speed, when the bus makes the jump, but, oh, but, it, but it goes, up it goes upwards. Yeah, same thing happens in this, right? Got you. Dumb, dumb, dumb. It's completely dumb. It's it's popcorn movie, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. Thoroughly entertaining. Yeah, yeah. And then it ends. That's the end of the first bit of the movie. Where? How long is that? An hour? Yeah, about that maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It ends and. The volcano's going off and they haven't captured all the dinosaurs. They've got some. But not all of them. Maybe maybe 50, right? Uh -huh. But there's a whole island full of dinosaurs. But Nathan, uh, life uh, finds a way. But it doesn't. There's oh. a scene of them dying. You don't oh, see all the no. dinosaurs dying, but like all the smoke comes up and it's all fiery. And then in the smoke, you see the shadow of a, like a brachiosaur standing on its hind legs and screaming. And it's, a, it's like a goodbye, but it's... it's Deeply upsetting. Oh, God. That does sound deeply and upsetting. And it's a reset because it's saying that island is dead. Yeah, they've wiped it from the map, but yeah. map basically. Yeah, okay. Okay. So that's wow. quite sad. It is quite sad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, can I just say yeah. that InGen, or whoever it is that yeah, came yeah. up with the Jurassic Park and then Jurassic World, they must have some of the worst geologists working for them because if yeah. they built all that <laughs> stuff yeah. on an island that had an active volcano and they were like, Nah, don't worry, I'll be fine, mate, for at least 4,000 years. And then it goes off. Yeah. Those guys are fucking sued, mate. Yeah. They're going to be sued. They'll be on the street, penniless. They'll have nothing left. It, like, it's, it's done in all sorts of ways. Sure. 
and that's one of the reasons it's dumb. Um, you set up the, earlier, the reason that the Bryce Dallas Howard and, and Chris Pratt's character have to go on there is they say that they want to find the dinosaurs, and the best way to do that is they've got these like electronic tags in them, but it's like fingerprint coded or something. Only only um, people who worked there before or something stupid. Like what's that. her name? Uh, the the character Bryce Dallas Howard's character. I'm going to say Claire. It, I think it is Claire. Yeah, okay. I think only she can turn it on because she was the manager of the. Oh. Oh. So they go there and they turn it on, and what they really want is just to track Blue because they'll never be able to catch him. Her, sorry. What is it with these business continuity plans with these I people? Know, They're terrible, aren't they? So Rafe, Rafe Spall is set up, and he's kind of like the, the, the caretaker of the foundation of a new retcon bit. So you know uh, Hammond in the first two Jurassic Parks? Yeah. He had a partner that he worked with who was just like him, played by uh, Zephyr Cochran himself. Oh, uh, James Cromwell? Is yeah, that? yeah, oh, yeah. Brilliant. And he's in, a, he's in a wheelchair and he's got a cane that's black and it's got the thing on it as well. It's got the... Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, so you kind of feel for him. And you, you, I personally was like, okay, how is he going to be the bad guy? Because he's got a black cane as opposed to a white cane. So in, in movie taxonomy, that means he's, oh, he's, he's the bad, bad. guy. Yeah. He's, he's not the bad guy. Oh, he's not? No, he's just like a doddering old fool. So where the hell was he during Jurassic Park? No, no, he's not well. Oh, uh, okay, fine. It'll get to what was going on with him though. Oh, okay. So um, Rafe Spall, spoilers, is the bad guy. Of course he is. Because he he's, wants, he's British. He's like, oh, should we, should we save the dinosaurs? We should save them, conserve them. We'll get them and we'll do it under the radar, but we'll get them and we'll, we'll save them. We want them to sell them. Of course they want to sell them. As weapons? Or yeah, just bidder, sell them. They have whatever. like a black market, like uh, bidding, like, what do you got, an auction where they bring them all out. Once they've captured them, they bring them back to the mainland. They bring them back to this James Cromwell's mansion, which is... And what? Now, this is the dumb bit. Now, this is the really dumb bit, right? This is the oh, really dumb bit. What's going on? Under the mansion is this huge bat cave like space where they keep, where they've got cages for dinosaurs and they've got scientific experiments. They're growing new dinosaurs. They're making the Indoraptor and all that sort of stuff. And James Cromwell's character has no idea this is happening under his house. That's ridiculous. How do you build all that? Like, that's the dumbest part of the movie. Um, you just said Indoraptor. Yeah. So that's the big bad dinosaur of this movie. Yeah, right? yeah. I'll get to him. Hang on. Okay, okay. So all that's happening is reveal that Rafe Spall's a bad guy. Blah, blah, blah. They start doing this... Tor- uh, well, there's a bit I've mixed, missed out. The bit on the boat is quite good. It's dumb again. Okay. Do they break out on the boat? Not quite. Oh, God. Blue needs a blood transfusion because she gets shot. And luckily they've got a... a prehistoric vet lady there okay and so there are no other raptors so they need blood similar from a similar type animal guess which one is similar in their raptor no Tyrannosaurus rex yeah they can't give it t-rex shh, blood shh, just, no, just move on it's fine shh. it's fine are just, you shushing me from pointing out holes in yes. the story <laughs> yes okay fine it, because it's just fun it is fun because there's a bit where they have to get like you have to like pierce the T-Rex's neck and get the blood out and then it scratches all the thing and it wakes up. Is that the bit where Pratt jumps through its mouth? Yeah, yeah. As there's its a, mouth there's a quite a fun, tense moment where he's like, he's like almost trapped under her head and like the, the eyes close because it's, you know, if it's... Um, Zopped out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And then the eye opens really wide. It's, it's fun, right? It's yeah, a yeah. fun... Oh, it's, it's a dinosaur film. It's exactly. supposed to be fun. So it's stupid, but it's fun. Then they get to the mainland and... Uh, Explanation, explanation, explanation. Loads of nonsense stuff. And like, ah, oh, we've built the Indoraptor. But it's only like a beta test Indoraptor because the next one would be super smart and could take orders better than a human. Whereas this one's like a feral thing. Right, okay. So they haven't made the other one yet. Right. They've just made this feral They've thing. They've just made the really, really dangerous one to yeah, see yeah. if they could. And it's a monster movie at this but they point. they forgot to ask whether or not they should. It's, yeah, it's a monster movie because he's no, the Indoraptor isn't... It doesn't have weight like the other animals. So dinosaurs in these films tend to be quite muscular, and when they stomp, even the t- even the raptors have weight to them. Like you, I think they do this really quite well in these movies. Like when they're jumping around rooftops, or mm. all that, the raptors sort of have that bounce about them, and like yeah, they, they have and when weight. they land, they sort of interact with the environment they exactly, land on. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the Indoraptor, I think, is the worst bit because it's a monster. Right. It's, snake-like but uh, but is it bigger than a normal raptor yeah a little bit but smaller than the Indominus Rex yeah 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 right Um, and it's clever it does a weird thing where it grins at one point because it like 
tricks someone to thinking that they're sedated and then turns around and it grins it kind of winks at the audience it's really dumb it's like I really don't like the interact I hate that <laughs> I, I'm not having a dinosaur smiling and winking no I know it's, it, that, it's, it's quite silly right and the, I don't like the second part of this movie I don't like the second movie really so the haunted house slasher sort of thing is the Indoraptor somehow escapes yeah turns yeah. on its uh, cap its yeah. uh, its creators yeah. and kills everything yeah Wu gets away again obviously of course he does um, crazy bastard throughout this in the background there's a there's a court hearing going on the whole point of this is whether they should save the dinosaurs or not whether they should let them die when the island blows up and Ian Malcolm is talking at that and ah. spoilers from the trailer he says welcome to Jurassic World right yeah so at the end of Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom in the mansion where all the animals are in the battle that ensues with the Indoraptor all sorts of you know there are marines not marines there are mercenaries there and stuff and guns go off and people get killed and blue gets out and it's all mayhem right yeah the coolant thing breaks and it's like deadly gas is going in the area where all the dinosaurs are so they they have a much more immediate dilemma similar setup to the beginning do they release the dinosaurs or let them die now let me tell you who releases them this is the big twist of the movie okay a little girl is involved I've seen her in the trailers yeah 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 do you know who she is uh she's Pratt Pratt Pratt's kid nope who is she then? she is set up as the granddaughter of James Cromwell okay right but what she is is a clone of James Cromwell's daughter oh because that's what these dinosaurs are aren't they they're clones Oh, so in Gem we're also looking at cloning humans. Not necessarily. James Cromwell's character were, and it's against all moral world laws and everything. And so she is this anomaly. Yeah. And she sees the dinosaurs and thinks, well, I'm like them, so should I die? And she Aww. doesn't think she should die. She's alive. She knows she's alive. She knows she's a person. So she thinks so the dinosaurs presses, should live. So she presses the red button. It's a big red button, like in a cartoon. <laughs> and it opens a gate, and all the dinosaurs escape. Set up for the next movie, which is, I think, trying to be a bit Planet of the Apes, because the world is full of dinosaurs. Well, uh, sp- but it's not that many dinosaurs. Spo- spoilers, Nathan. Yeah. But I, I, I have, and this is a... This is a Nerds Chatting Podcast exclusive. Okay. I have the title for the already approved third movie. Which we knew about before. Yeah, yeah. It is called Jurassic Park 6, Jurassic World 3, The Bloody Dinosaurs Have Eaten Everyone of the Dragon Emperor. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I knew it. So they escape. They're out in the world at the yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. For the love of God, did they learn nothing from that That uh, when the T-Rex was in San Diego that time? Yeah, it's it's it's... Look, I'm, I've, what I've done is I've talked that badly about this movie all the way through. That's fine. It's very dumb. And the ending scene is the T-Rex sort of like roaring at a, 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 a lion. And apparently there's an end credit scene, which I didn't see. Oh. Uh, you see the, uh, the big... Um, I can't remember the water dinosaurs. Is it a dinosaur drinking from the Thames? No, no. But, oh, you, okay. but you see like the big... Is it, I want to say it's like a mesosaurus or something. I don't know. It's not that. It's a... Uh, the, the Meg. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, right. You see that, like, attacking surfers in the, in the waves. It's a, great, it's a great imagery. Right. But the trouble is there's not many of them. So what, did, what was good about this film? Very quickly, give me five things that were good about this film. It was a thoroughly enjoyable ride. Okay. That's one thing. Practical effects made it feel real. Okay, good. Uh, you like the first part of the first movie? Oh, the first part's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, okay. The island stuff is pretty good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and it is quite good at horror in the second part of it. And I don't like horror You that hate much. horror. Yeah, but it's quite good. It's done quite well. Okay. And it, yeah, go on. What was bad? Uh, the fact that you didn't really care about the characters. And a dinosaur it, winking and smiling at me is not good. I'm no, not having that. it happens once and it is a bit silly. Everyone is kind of a... I take it they kill the Indoraptor, do they? Yeah, yeah. Is Blue involved in killing it? Do you want to know? Yeah, tell me. Yeah, so they end up, they get out of the building and they're on the top of like a greenhouse type area. But it's not a greenhouse, it's the actual museum bit they were in before, but it's like a glass roof, like a Victorian glass roof. Sure. Um, it's quite a lot like, say, the um, Natural History Museum in, in London. Okay, it's yeah, It's got yeah. a feel like that. Uh, and this is set up well before, but there's a triceratops skull in the middle of the room that they uh, have to dart around. Big horns sticking up. Yeah, those three yeah, great big yeah, horns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets pierced, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, Blue comes out, 
saves them, blah, blah, blah. They fight. They can see all the glass cracking underneath them. Do they jump for it? Do they not? And there's a big setup with a gun where the Indoraptor is trained to follow this laser beam and then follow the sound of it. So the oh, Indoraptor is right. clever enough to not tread on the glass, but then Claire turns up with the gun and, and points the laser at Owen which means that the Indoraptor can't not go for it because it's trained to. Yeah. So it moves forward and it just falls down and falls onto the... Okay. Um, does, does Blue live? Yeah. And Owen and, and Claire, yeah. Pratt, 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 and, yeah. and Dallas, Denver yeah. live? Right, okay. Um, what was bad? Yeah, I think I might have just yeah, asked this already. Don't, but yeah, you don't, yeah. don't like the people. Don't like, don't like people. Don't well, like it's not you don't like them, you just don't care. And, and everything's quite like simplistic big red button to open the door and there's a door that opens them out oh the dilemma of killing them or not killing them yeah it's kind of it's kind of Stupid. a bit yeah. it's a bit um, broad strokes yeah 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 it's, tr it's trying to be um, it's trying to give you uh, an intelligent conundrum where really it's let you would just freaking let them die of course you would let them die I don't know if you would of course you would let them anyway, die it's what it is is uh Millions and billions of dollars worth of products. Yeah. Can't just they, let it die. They, all of the Jurassic Park movies are dumb. Sure. What are we expecting at this point? I don't know. I don't know. Right, let's get into some more spoilers from um, Screen Rant. So Screen Rant did an article that said Jurassic World 2, the 10 biggest spoilers. So I'm going to go through them. So Jeff Goldblum's role is basically just a cameo. Yep. That's, Not in it at all. that's typical. Uh, it's not a rescue mission. We got that from the second trailer. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Henry Wu creates a new dinosaur. That's the Indoraptor. Yep. So we've had an Indominus Rex. Yep. And now we've had an Indo, I guess, Indominus Raptor. Yep. What's next? I don't think they'll go that route anymore. I think it would just be the dinosaurs on, on the land. Okay. The problem with it being a Planet of the Apes style setup, which they kind of do, because at the end, um, Owen is driving along in the truck and they've got the little clone girl and they've got, and, and Claire's there as well. They're driving along and there are some like pterodons flying beside them. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a bit like, oh, we have to be wary because they're out in the world now. Yeah. But there's not many of them. But there's still enough to eat people. Yeah, but there's not many. There's 7 billion people on the planet. There are like 50 dinosaurs. The, th the thing with... But they can have baby yeah, dinosaurs, Nathan. Yeah, there's not enough of them to reproduce like that. I wonder if there'll be a, a time jump and something else will happen. Anyway, God. Planet of the Apes works. Spoilers for um, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. It works that there are only a few apes who can reproduce mm. because the humans are being killed off by the virus at the same time. But also the virus is spreading to other apes and other parts of the world and yeah. making them intelligent Exactly. Well. So, this, so it's, there's, a, there's a, a viral part to that. Whereas in this, it's not that. Okay. Um, so someone called Eli Mills murders Benjamin Lockwood. I take it that's um, Eli that's Mills' Rafe, is Rafe Spall's, Rafe Spall's yeah. character yeah. murders um, uh, Zephyr Cochrane. Yeah. James Cromwell, yeah. yeah. Okay. Maisie Lockwood is a clone. Yeah, like what you she said. Is, yeah, so yeah. she's a little girl. I take it. She's yeah. quite likable in it. Like uh, one of one of my least favorite things about the Jurassic Park movies often is the kids because sometimes they're a little bit. In the first movie, I think they're really well cast. Yeah, I think second and third movies, yeah, not so fussed with them. Uh, also, Jurassic World, I find one of the brothers very annoying. I'll oh, leave, no, I'll leave it to you to decide. Um, well, the older one just wants to look at girls, and the younger one is having post-traumatic uh, stress about the fact that his parents are splitting up. Yeah, whatever. But this one, she's, she's, quite, she's quite believable. Okay, okay. Um, oh, Blue kills the Indoraptor. Okay, fine, yeah, I guess. Uh, it's a team effort. The good guys live. Yep. The bad guys die. Yeah, obviously. Oh, Toby Jones is in it. Yeah, he's, he's probably the worst part about this movie. Oh, okay. Oh, I'll yeah. get past that. That's yeah. a shame. Oh, Maisie releases the dinosaurs she into does. the wild, like yeah, you said. Yeah, And... Dino apocalypse now. Yeah. So basically, yeah, that's what you said. Uh, so there's a, a picture of a dinosaur roaring at a lion. Fantastic. Yeah. It, <laughs> in imagery wise, this movie is packed chocker full of great imagery. Right. It's just done. Okay. But so, what do you want from a Jurassic well, movie? It, it seems to me like a perfect summer popcorn film. Turn your brain off. Go and get in, go and be enjoy, uh, entertained for two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, Maybe I should go and see it, but I think I'm probably just going to wait for it to come on Sky. That's or, a shame because I think it's got spectacle. Yeah, but you know. Now uh, you know everything from it, though. Yeah, and I, I wasn't that fussed anyway, to be honest with you. I really wasn't. That um, opening, I could watch that opening again and again. It was so good. 
I'm sure. I'm sure it was. Yeah. I, maybe not. That's the bit. Maybe. I'd, maybe I'd go for that. Yeah. I'd love to know what Tim thinks about it. I really would. Yeah. Me too. Me too. I'll have to ask him. Yeah, we will. Yeah. Right. I think that's that's it that's today, isn't show. it? Yeah. 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 It's so, a quick one today, I think. Yes. But, yeah. yeah. Well, we, we, we're one man down, and one. He talks man, a lot as well. Yeah, really, that one man. So God. annoying. He's he just is. like a like a river of nonsense comes out of his God, mouth. I had to spend all day with him yesterday at the conference. Had him in the car on the way up, in the car on the way back. We sat next to each other. Oh, jeez. I do just, love him, though. I do love him. It was just He's wonderful. all right. He's wonderful. He's a good guy. Yeah. Right. Um, so where, where can people find us? Oh, right, yes. They can find us um, on uh, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Um, just search for Nerds Chatting. That's all one word. Nerd, N-E-R-D-S, Chatting. Um, you can send us an email at outlook.com forward slash nerds chatting no 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 nerds chatting at outlook.com yep. what am I talking about don't know uh, we're on YouTube um, this podcast is available on iTunes and Spotify and if you want to leave us a review that'd be great and uh, we've got a blog as well which is nerdschatting.com you can get uh, this podcast on there as well we've got uh, a new new podcast on, on this network which, which is just chatting which is yep. conversations with everyday people about their lives yep that's available uh, we've got a couple of things in the work for that um, go and listen to Antonio Tapazio talk about his life 90 year old 90 year old man Italian man living in England I'm not going to lie I could listen to that guy talk all day yeah, he's his, ac- his accent is just yeah. amazing and there'll be some new stuff coming from you a, a, a Ben only podcast coming soon yeah I've got an, I've got an idea which keeps evolving yeah. and I, don't, I might not limit it to just films I might talk about some other things as my, well my advice to you as I, as I said to you in the text messages and I say it to you now is just do it and let it evolve just do one yeah. If, if you like it, good. If you don't like it, change the bits you don't like and do some more. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I will. Just do it and release it. Fine, I'll do that. Okay, good. good. I've just had another idea of what it could be as well. Okay. Oh, God. I'll what get we, to it at some point. What are we do next week on this podcast? Well, I do want to say, I don't know if you're going to cut it into this thing, uh, this podcast at all, but the World Cup starts today. And a little while ago, we were, I was reminded of two years ago when we were the Lazarus Pit podcast, we did a tournament. Yes. Uh, where we, we chose, we put... Uh, football teams against uh, superheroes and then we picked out listeners who wanted to be involved and assigned them that and we did like a knockout and we followed through the Euros basically I was going to do that again for the World Cup this year I have completely run out of time I'm not going to do it this year okay. and we were going to do we were going to mix it up and I thought that we'd just do superheroes again but you said oh no wouldn't it be good if we did Star Wars characters and I thought that would have been great you know we could have had it could have been a final where Darth Vader is Brazil against Luke Skywalker's Germany or something like that. Yeah. It would have been incredible. It wouldn't have worked out that way. It would have been Hammerhead as Brazil yeah. and it would have been Lando Calrissian as bloody uh, uh, Germany or something like that. Yeah. So I have, I've run out of time this year. I'm really, really sorry to anyone who, who had heard me talking about that on Twitter. I've just not had the time to do it. You were poorly well, sick, weren't you? Yeah, and I've, I, I've had a little issue this week where my hand exploded to about five times its normal size after I got bitten by a horse fly. It was like, it was like Captain Kirk from the first Starship movie. Yeah, it's not good. So I, I ran out of time. I'm very sorry. We'll do something another time. There you go. So what are we doing next week? I don't know. I'll figure it out in the next few days. We'll do something else. I think we're doing it on Tuesday, so we better figure it out soon. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, well, it's down to you to figure it out then. Okay, then. Okay. Right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye.